Hey minions, welcome to Crank It Up. I'm Jim Price, and on this episode of The Gauntlet, I want to talk about a really interesting phenomenon in Smash Up, transitive synergy. If you remember from algebra, equivalence is transitive, but similarity is not. In Smash Up, no faction is meant to be identical, but there are some similar ones, and it makes sense that similar factions would have synergy. But it isn't automatically true that if A and B are strong, and B or C are strong, that A and C would also be strong when A, B, and C are all radically different. However, there are occasions where this does occur, and it's especially intriguing when four factions have transitive synergy, which is precisely what happened with these four. There was an absolutely fascinating conversation in the comments that reflected this phenomenon as well as one of my dilemmas I was facing. A few viewers, like Liam O'Brien, thought ancient Egyptian werewolves would be a combo, but Mickey DV pointed out that I said no repeats other than Kaiju Innsmouth. Dave Haynes pointed out that Jim Price loves Egyptian werewolves, which some guy named Crank It Up Podcast confirmed, claiming to know me personally. Adam NP pointed out that Spirit of the Forest combined really well with the Egyptian cards, while Father Time 89 predicted ancient Egyptian sharks. I was really tempted to re-up with ancient Egyptian werewolves, especially with their titan. I do love that combo, and March Smashness committee member Blobbleed saw them winning everything in his trial run last year. And I decided on option A, Ancient Egyptian Sharks, for all the reasons that Father Time mentioned, and Luchador Fairies, whom I've loved since the very first version of Lucadors. But there was a problem, and I started to get gun-shy about Egyptian Sharks being able to do enough against the upper tier teams. I was worried about them running out of cards to sustain their plays. And fairy luchadors have really fun plays, but I can see them getting misplayed, and they don't have the highest upside either. I was dealing with this dilemma at the last possible second, and couldn't risk changing too much, so I wanted to pick one of the three internal pairings, even if it meant keeping my original choice. The truth is, I really like all of these options for different reasons, and they all have legitimate reasons to be in the tournament. I couldn't decide, so I brought the pairings before the secret smash-up cabal, and with their input, I decided to change it to option B, which means that today, I'll be talking about ancient Egyptian luchadors. While I had experience with most of the combos in the tournament, including fairy sharks, this combo was based purely on theory, and I didn't have a chance to play them until recently. And then I played them again as soon as possible. And at this point, I'm officially calling dibs on them in the tournament, because I love this team, despite seating them poorly, and I am officially declaring them a Dark Horse candidate to win the entire tournament. One of the most interesting things about this team is that their greatest strength is largely overlooked. Neither faction is known for their card draw, but they both have great potential for it. In fact, they have too much, as I was discarding cards routinely. If you were following my question on Smash posting about playing 11 cards and discarding 6 cards, it was with Ancient Egyptians. If you can get the Pharaoh going, you can draw a ton of cards, especially if one of those is you can take this with you. Having four extra cards to start your turn is fantastic, but the Luchadors also filter three cards from your deck with Yellow Demon. One of those cards is Smart Setup, which enables further card draw. Together, you can burn through your deck surprisingly quickly if you get your engine going. You will go through your deck, and having the Mummy stay in play is like drawing an additional four cards because they never go back into your deck. Mummies are great for intelligent setup because they add the minimum power creep while not using your regular plays, allowing you to stage attacks on multiple bases simultaneously. With their card draw, you can unlock their more obvious benefits. Their extreme ways of swinging a base at the last moment in completely unpredictable ways. If you can bury cards without having them be seen, you can attack an opponent in so many different ways that trying to defend against it is difficult. Do they leave only one minion there? only to find out it's a Tomb Trap? Do they play many minions, avoiding Tomb Trap and Reversal, only to find out it's Blessing of Anubis? You can uncover at the start of your turn or before the base scores. Unfortunately, the Hidden Ninja Rules dispute hurts this team as well, because Lost Knowledge uncovering Kappa Roja would be fantastic, but it doesn't work that way right now. But, Pharaoh can uncover Kappa Roja, who really should not be able to destroy minions of printed power of 3, but he does. Burying Quick Setup can make Pharaoh a mole who draws a card, and you can play Tag Team to play a Kappa Roja, who would then trigger 
because it's still in play specials. You still have reversal, and burying powerful setup could be a great precursor to stealing a base, though quick setup also does the job. You can simply destroy a minion and get quick setup back, if they have only a single minion on the base. This is in addition to the tomb traps that the ancient Egyptians already have, and players may forget that Plague of Locusts is still around. It seems like this team has a plan for everything in Phase 3, and the puzzle of figuring out what to do is one that I find so satisfying. To me, burying is like a setup card, and you are doing something on one turn to pay off on a future turn. While there are cards that bury themselves, I much rather prefer the Pyramid's Engineer's ability to bury a hidden card. You can also do this with Seal the Tomb, but I prefer to use that to uncover two cards. I really like approaching this team as a multi-base attack. Because of their specials, they are never really out of the base, and it's great having Pyramid Engineers burying cards in different bases. You can only uncover one card for free, so you cannot advance as quickly as you like, but it can hide your true target. I have always enjoyed the Ancient Egyptian flexibility with Lost Knowledge. You can use it to bury or uncover a card, and it doesn't even have to be on the scoring base. This can mean burying or uncovering Seal the Tomb to uncover two cards at an unexpected moment. Because I can still destroy minions and reversal, I don't necessarily need the phase 3 boost there. What this does is allow me to score multiple bases on my turn or position myself for solo scoring on my next turn. Burying requires you to use extra cards, which means you can start to run out of them. Obviously card draw helps here, but so does recursion. Burying allows you to bury just cards, rather than a specific type of card, so you have the freedom to favor one or the other. In this case, you can favor actions because of Senior Mucho Slam versus the monsters. You can get Quick Setup back into your hand, which is my preferred burying card, and shuffle in as many actions as you want with the perfect granularity. Normally, this might make your minions starved, but having the mummies as perpetual minions really helps with that. If you get their card draw going, you will go through your deck, and not having to shuffle in the mummies is great, as it speeds up drawing your better cards. This team also has ways to slow you down. The Luchadors already had Pin, which is great for nullifying power on a base while still contributing towards the breakpoint. But Senor Muchoslam can also play Ancient Curse with his talent, which can remove up to 3 power. This can help set up a Tomb Trap play in advance, which is great during scoring. This team is by nature a reactive deck. There's a lot that you can do, but it highly depends on the situation. There are so many targets for Senor Muchoslam's recursion. This is especially true of burying, where you are predicting future moves and hopefully not telegraphing your plays. In some ways, this team has a lot of tools. They can play extra actions, and they can play extra minions, both with and without burying. They have specials and recursion. They have power boosts, which can be standard or above average. It's possible to get 3 power per minion in a single turn. They can weaken you, destroy you, destroy you instantly, and most importantly, they can draw cards to enable all of these plays. Burying is very hard to defend against because only a few cards can affect them. The greater risk is that buried cards will end up getting unused if your opponent rushes the base. Of course, with their specials, they can turn this into an advantage if you end up stealing the base, but there are times when I've left buried cards on the table, and good ones at that. While they have some tools to counter swarm factions, swarm is still a strong way to overtake them. They can only destroy minions one at a time, and need a lot of cards or time to do that. Kappa Roja isn't as effective when there are multiple small minions, and neither is Reversal, unless Reversal can target a singularly powerful minion. As these are often big drops, it's hard to set that up without burying Quick Setup. While I am giving these guys Dark Horse status, and I'm not the only one in the Cabal doing that, I can absolutely see this team being played incorrectly and getting knocked out early. They have a lot of tools, but are definitely not C-Base Smash Base. You need to think multiple turns in advance, having multiple playbooks in flight at the same time, and you need to know how to bury cards effectively. You have to save some cards for later in order to execute that long-term plan. I like that they have instant access to part of their card draw engine, but you need to condition yourself to play the long game and be comfortable playing from behind. Regarding their card draw, I found myself with 16 cards at the end of my turn once, and that's not a good position because discarding that many cards is difficult. You are going to have regrets because this team wants to hold on to their specials. That can tie up your hand, 
and as a result, I ended up discarding cards that are not great, but would have been useful down the line. This team has no defensive abilities, which can hurt because they rely on several engine minions. Pharaoh and Pyramid Engineer will be doing a lot of heavy lifting. Luchadors always struggle when they cannot play actions on other players' minions, and this team relies a lot on affecting other players, so defensive abilities hurt them. Sometimes the best defense is a good offense, but the opposite can also be true against this team. We saw that with Vigilante Oryx last year. On a smaller note, this team does have two minions that can fluctuate on power significantly and can actually have their power go down depending on the course of events. It's not terribly difficult to manage, but still something to consider. Once you start uncovering cards, you are tipping your hand, so you cannot afford to be short power and waste all those extra plays. Even as I'm recording this, I'm salivating over this team and I cannot wait to play them again. They are so perfectly under the radar and enable fairer sharks to be in the tournament as well. Even though I would have been happy with any of the three options, I really love this team and I feel like everything worked out in the end. I may even have a head start for next year with some of the other options. What do you think of ancient Egyptian luchadors? Let me know in the comments. That's it for this team. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let's shut it down.